Hi, welcome to Well-Rounded Mama's YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us. If you find this video helpful, like, subscribe, share with your friends, ring the bell so that you can be notified for future videos. My name's Sherry and I'm joined by Sarah. We're midwives down at Well-Rounded Mama. Today we thought we would talk about what position should my baby be in? And I asked Sarah to join me because she teaches the Well-Rounded Childbirth class down here and so she has a lot of tips and tricks. I thought I would start by saying, I want women to have a little bit of faith in their body's ability to know what to do. We believe your baby's super brilliant and knows exactly what to do. However, in the rare situation that we have a baby that maybe is in a position that is a little bit less favorable to mom when it comes to comfort and delivery, we wanted to give you some tips and tricks. Before we get into those tips and tricks, how can we tell what position the baby's in? What different types of positions can the baby be Sure. In? Typically, by the time you're around 36 weeks, that's kind of when your baby has chosen its position. Up until 28 weeks, we have yeah. no idea what position your kid's in and we don't care because <laughs> they can be in any position they want. Right. However, after 28 weeks, we are mm -hmm. palpating a woman's abdomen. So yes. if you go back and watch the ultrasound video, there's some more information about that that talks about why someone might choose an ultrasound and why a midwife doesn't need someone to choose an ultrasound. And so after 28 sure. weeks, that's what I guess I was referring to is yeah. what kinds of positions can the mm -hmm. baby be in once we're kind of palpating the abdomen. And So I mean, once you're like in that third trimester and you're getting closer to your 36 week visit, um, usually we can tell the baby's position based off of what we feel in the abdomen. So like if we go up towards the top of your belly and we feel this nice firm mass and when we move it, the whole baby seems to move, then we know the baby's butt is up at the top and that's where it should be. <laughs> um, when we check down below towards your pubic bone, if it kind of like bobbles, like you can kind of imagine like your head kind of bobbles back and forth, then we know it's typically a head and that that head is down where it should be. But if we do notice that you're getting close to, you know, that 36 week mark, and maybe we know that the baby's butt is, you know, towards your pubic bone, um, that we suspect that's going on, we we'll usually send you in for an ultrasound to just confirm that. And then we might talk about like maybe doing some versions or different body work type things to see if we can't get that kiddo to journey. And we want people to know that we recognize breach as a variation of normal and that I know that that's become this abnormal thing, I guess, here in America. Sure. However, we recognize this variation of normal. We just want to encourage babies to go head down for ease of mom and delivery. There are some really good resources. You always, childbirth education classes are great. Taking prenatal fitness classes are a really great resource. For me, the key is movement. Whenever you have a mom that's moving, even if it's just for 30 or 40 minutes every day, that's gonna help because what happens is the heaviest part of a baby is their head and the top of their spine. And so that generally is what kind of encourages babies to go head down. Yep. So if we see a baby and you have a mom and she's 30, 32 weeks, and the baby's still transverse, laying across the stomach, or is vertex, whether that is head down or head up, like you know, you now have to start kind of talking about how you might encourage that heaviest part of the baby to go towards the light. <laughs> so to speak. So what we thought we'd do is we give some tips and tricks. And a lot of these can be found on a website called Spinning Babies. Um, Spinning Babies has done a lot of work for encouraging babies to be in a good position. You know, it's interesting because there's some information on there that talks a little bit about, so babies hang out on either side of your stomach. This is the right side of my stomach. This is the left side of my stomach. And so if I have a baby in the right side or the left side of my stomach, on the right side, that is considered considered ideal it's ideal not the right the right's the opposite i thought it was you LOA. want it to be LOA. do you you too oh i think now i don't want to be quoted we're gonna have to look that up <laughs> i think right is not however i've never subscribed to that because for me so long as the baby's moving back and forth that's all i care about but we have it in the office we have this really great Spinning Babies Quick Reference Guide, and there's a lot of really great information there. We have several of them in the offices. Sarah has pulled out something called a Rebozo, and mm -hmm. so she's gonna to talk to us a little yeah. bit about that. So Rebozos, if you look them up online, I'm not gonna go through everything in this video because that would be ridiculous, but you can go find YouTube videos on using a tool like this during labor or even prenatally. Um, you can use it to kind of sift the belly and it helps the baby, like that heaviest part of the baby kind of swing towards the front. 
um, and you're just kind of like shimmying them so that they kind of like shimmy into the position that they want to be in. You, it can also be used to like alleviate back pain, which is kind of, you know, one of the biggest issues with a baby who's maybe not in an ideal position during labor is that back labor. So using tools like a rebozo prenatally or even during labor can be really helpful to help turn those babies. Here's a kind of a good idea of what your tips and tricks are. The first one, movement in pregnancy, any okay. kind of movement, squatting, um, Pilates, yoga, swimming, walking, all of the things. Mm -hmm. We want to see you movement. Second one, a rebozo is this really great kind of low interventive kind of way to kind of help baby and help you be comfortable. I've had a lot of moms use it even just kind of tying around their waist to kind of relieve the, their hips yeah. from hip pain. Mm -hmm. So just a really good kind of versatile tool. The third thing that I think that we turn to a little bit um, would be spinning babies because yeah. there are a lot of exercises that you would be in and most of those are called inversions a time where you are getting yourself into a position that works with gravity the fourth thing that i wanted to talk about was other modalities so acupuncture is amazing for helping babies to be in a really good position mm -hmm. as well as um, chiropractors chiropractors yep so make sure you when you call to schedule an appointment a it's best if it's a referral B, someone who knows how to work with pregnant women, mm -hmm. and C, really somebody who has been trained in Webster's technique. And journaling, because sometimes it's emotional. So that would be our fifth thing. Yeah, I think that journaling is a fantastic tool to use during pregnancy. Like sometimes we just feel guilty that we have certain thoughts, like, mm -hmm. you know, we might doubt that we'll be a good mom, or, you know, like we all have like our baggage, our stuff that yes. like we take throughout our lives, <laughs> just me. <laughs> um, but this can be hard to, to voice to people, especially mm -hmm. to your care provider, if you don't have that kind of relationship with your provider or you're just not comfortable with that yet, or maybe you just haven't even sorted through those feelings yet. Like sometimes just putting pen to paper and even just doing automatic writing where just anything that comes to your mind, you put down on that paper. And what's the first thing that you think of when you think of your birth or when you think of, you know, your your baby or being a mom or whatever. And just kind of going through that, then you can, you know, eventually find like pinpoint those feelings a little bit better. Just making sure you're exploring both avenues, the, the physical, mental, and emotional aspects of why is my baby in this different position? And whether you explore that prenatally or during labor, like it's never too late to explore why you're going through or experiencing something you're experiencing. So outside of those five techniques, anything else you'd like to add, Miss Sarah? I think just preparing for birth in general. If you're thinking about what position your baby needs to be in, maybe actually going to some sort of childbirth class mm -hmm. could be super helpful to just educate yourself on what those different positions are um, and what you can do about them. So a lot of childbirth classes will do a part on comfort measures where, you know, if you are experiencing back labor or if you do have a baby that's maybe in a little bit of a funky position, um, you've got some tools at your disposal, like physically moving your body type of tools. So thanks for joining us. If you had a baby that was in a different position, whether they were born that way or they came out a different way, share with us your story below. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. We look forward to hearing you from you next week. L-O-T-L-O-A or R-O-A. Don't be L-O-T. Don't be L-O-T. I don't know what's wrong with me. You know what's wrong with me? I'm gonna tell you what's wrong with me. This is my lunch. That's what's wrong with me. Do you see this? This is my lunch. I'd be happier if it was a cheeseburger. But see, then I start leaning and I have to tell you my body's like, that's not weird. <laughs> like I have to sit up perfectly straight, make sure my stripes are on my boobs normal. Okay. All right, we're ready to start. You're recording. I had a dream last night that we filmed an entire segment and you forgot to record it. No, I'm stressed and want to make sure it's there. <laughs>